Many of us have lost the substance. Mm -hmm. The substance of Christianity is Jesus. Mm -hmm. Hi there. Welcome to House of Hosting Heaven. Hi. My name is Melody and this is Pastor Tim. I'm Tim. Hi. <laughs> These guys were around in the previous video. If you haven't watched it, I highly suggest you watch it. I talk about my experience uh, as a first lady in my first year of marriage. And um, I think it's super helpful. You really want to spend some time listening in. It will be a blessing to you, I believe. It will bless you. Absolutely. So, uh, because I promised you guys that Pastor Tim was going to be in the next video because he was not able to finish, uh, yep. we had a little bit of a situation with yep. Zion. Yep, this guy. <laughs> we had a little bit of a situation, but now we want to just kind of um, talk about the value of authenticity in ministry. Um, I think we're living in times where more than ever, we are looking for authentic figures to follow uh people that are genuinely genuinely authentic uh people that are truly truly preaching the gospel in its fullness uh and the gospel in its truest most authentic form uh take me through what goes through your mind like when you think of the authenticity well look much goes through my mind yeah um, but i think one of the main things that go through my mind when we deal with authenticity. Maybe let's actually start with the scripture. Yeah. Um, ah. Acts 20. Um, Acts chapter 20 from verse 26. Uh, if you have your Bible there, I would encourage you to just go there with me. Acts 20, 26. Uh, okay, my boy, you want to preach with me? Come um, and join me. Okay, so Acts twenty twenty six. Um, it's Paul really speaking to a group of believers who he, he wouldn't see again. He had been given an opportunity to minister to them, and now he was bidding them farewell. And this is what he says to them. He says, Therefore I testify to you this day that I am innocent of the blood of all men. For I have not shunned to declare to you the whole counsel of God. That is the essence of what we want to talk about today. Paul says, I have not shunned to declare to you the whole counsel of God. And an authentic minister does not shun away from declaring to a group of believers, to your sphere of influence, the whole counsel of God, not part of God's plan because mm. the other parts are, are not convenient or they're not politically correct or mm. you're not comfortable. Mm. The whole counsel of God. So wow. what causes ministers to be inauthentic, I guess, is the question that we need to answer today. Yeah. Um, not exhaustively, but we'll look at some reasons that may cause ministers to be inauthentic. Yeah. And we will also look at some keys on how do I become authentic. This will help you whether you're a minister, whether you are being prepared by God for ministry, whether you are a child of God. Authenticity is a non-negotiable with God, and yeah. He wants us to strive um, for that um, ideal. You know. Mm. So, what causes ministers to be inauthentic? The first thing I've written down in my few years of ministry uh, experience mm. is ministers who have sent themselves are mm. inauthentic. Mm. Now, don't allow. Uh, the the notion of sending yourself to be held over your head. You know, some yeah. people are, are unwilling to go into ministry because people will ask them, oh, who laid hands on you? Mm. Or oh, who commissioned you? But remember, the Apostle Paul was sent by Jesus himself. So, mm. so if God speaks to you directly and instructs you, you have been sent. Yeah. Uh, when I'm saying people who send themselves, I'm talking about you have not heard from the Lord. Mm. You have not heard from your spiritual upline. You have just decided I'm going to be a, a you know, a, a, an apostle yeah. or I'm going to be a prophet. Uh -huh. You sent yourself, there's no original to refer to. Mm. So you are going to be inauthentic. You're mm. going to be, you can't be a copy of something you have not seen. Mm. So, so sending yourself causes you to be 
inauthentic. So allow God to prepare you. Allow allow um, the time to come when God will send you, but he has prepared you. The Bible says yeah. concerning John, he was in the wilderness until the time of his appearing. Mm. So it's so key that you allow God to prepare you and that you don't send yourself ahead of time. You know, we always love to say don't. Don't run before you walk. So mm. sending yourself causes a minister to be inauthentic. Yeah. Another thing that causes inauthenticity, I mean, do you want to comment on that, on sending yourself? Yeah, you sure. totally. Especially if you have, when you send yourself in many instances, you have an agenda. <coughs> you know, your agenda could be fame. Your agenda mm. could be money. Mm. Hey, Papa. <laughs> your agenda could be money. So when you, when you send yourself, you definitely curate your own message. When you're sending yourself, you're certainly going to curate your own message uh, so that you can achieve whatever whatever desire you have. Oh, oh. Honey. You're sleepy, my boy. I see it in your eyes. This is sleepy. Please send us pacifiers. Oh my if you're God. watching this video, send us a pacifier. <laughs> we can't find his pacifier and he is... He is all over the place. So yeah, if you definitely, if we've seen people that definitely have been coming into the scene and that they have specific agendas, and these are not kingdom agendas, they have either a profit mm, as an agenda, plan. Mm. Their, their plan is for profit, or their plan is fame. Um, when when you're in these type of scenarios mm. uh, and you're sending yourself. Mm. So the, true. These are the people we're talking about. So true. The second reason um, you said the fear of what people will say. The fear of what people will say causes ministers to be inauthentic. Mm. I speak from experience. Sometimes you want, you know what God is saying. Yeah. But you are like, ha! Ah, if I say this to, to these people, they come back next week. Mm. Am I not being judgmental? Yeah. Right? But that's what God is saying. Mm. So concern yourself with what God is saying. Yeah. Concern yourself with what God wants you to say yeah. and leave what people will say to the Holy Spirit. Mm. The mm. moment that becomes your priority, what mm. will people say? You're inviting inauthenticity to your doorstep. Wow. The most important thing is, what is God saying, number one? Number two, what is God saying about what he is saying? Because sometimes God will tell you something so that you can pray. It's not everything God tells you that is a a a, a word for someone. Sometimes yeah. it's a prayer point. So mm -hmm. understand what God is saying and what God wants you to do about what He is saying. Mm -hmm. So that's very important. When you are too concerned about what people will say, you become inauthentic. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, my boy. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Sorry, Giovanni. Let, we're, we're gonna pause now, and then we'll find this classified and come back because ah, uh, today. Today, today, today. today. <laughs> there we go. So we found the pacifier. Oh my God! Glory be to <laughs> God. <laughs> yeah, man. Glory be to the Lord Jesus. So we were talking about um, the fear of what people will say as one of the things that causes ministers to be inauthentic. The third thing here is the desire to please people. Yeah. Which is kind of connected to number two. Absolutely. Mm. Absolutely. Um, and the Bible talks about how the Pharisees mm. um, were interested and, and understood Jesus' message to a degree. Yeah. Um, and wanted to follow him, but they were more concerned with the yeah. opinions of men than mm. with the opinions of God. The same happened to Pontius Pilate. Mm. Pontius Pilate was interested in, in, in Jesus' ministry. But his bigger concern was what would people say more than what would God would say. Mm. Herod mm. was interested in John the Baptist's ministry. Yeah. In fact, he would um, seek an audience with him. Mm. But his priority was what do people say. Mm. So Nicodemus. Uh, we could go on and on. Nicodemus, mm. um, that's an arguable one from a theological perspective. Some mm. say he came by night so that he wouldn't be seen. Others say mm. it's because that was the time a rabbi has got to study. Then during the day they would teach. So some actually say it was an endorsement of Jesus' ministry, but let's not go there. Mm. Um, the, the fact of the matter is, when you are concerned about what people will say, mm. more than what God is saying and what God has asked you to do, mm. your authenticity has come to an end. Yeah, you know? yeah. yeah, absolutely. So mm. good. Mm. Um, a lack of consistency. 
<sighs> this one is it's very close to home. The Bible says, study to show yourself approved. Uh, a, a worker who does not need to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Yeah. The Bible says again, let no one look down upon you because of your youth, but be an example to the believers in faith and conduct and purity and, and, and so forth, right? Yeah. When you lack consistency, mm. then your ministry lacks certain proofs. Mm. Pastor Paul and Angel wrote a book titled, If You're a Minister, Look for This Book, It Will Help You, Making Full Proof of Your Ministry. Mm. That your ministry must have evidences that God called you. Mm. Now, your message might be solid because yeah. the word of the Lord abides forever. Yeah. But the degree to which your life is an epistle mm -hmm. of that message, comes down to your consistency. Because the word of the Lord is a seed. Unless you stick with it, you cannot get to harvest. Mm -hmm. So many ministers, amazing teachers, amazing uh, leaders, amazing preachers, amazing walking in the power of the Holy Spirit, but they lack the consistency that allows for their lives to be a mirror image of the gospel that they mm -hmm. preach. And as a result of that, authenticity is stolen from them by virtue of a lack of consistency. Mm. So consistency, these have, they say first man makes the habits, then the habits make the man. Yeah. So allow yourself to have habits that you stick to. You may not be a routine person. I'm not a routine person, but I've accepted that some areas of my life, mm -hmm. there's no shortcut. There mm -hmm. has to be routine. Mm -hmm. You see, so allow your ministry to have the consistency that produces sustainability and continuity. Mm -hmm. Speaking of routines, yes. <laughs> allow me to plug the 2022 Hosting Hell and Spiritual Life Plan. If you don't have a copy, <laughs> you've got to get yourself a copy. We've got digitally editable copies, and we can send it to you via email. Anyways, so we're going to be talking about uh, next, how do you actually become authentic? So first of all, uh, you, you spoke about striving to be like Jesus. Mm. 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 Can I also plug? We are starting a teaching series between now and Easter uh, that's going to be titled The Life and the Teachings of Jesus. Wow. Um, it's going to be amazing. It's going to be a midweek um, service. So if you're interested yeah. in that Zoom link, talk to my wife. She'll plug you. Okay. Otherwise, you can check out our, our YouTube channel, uh, GFH Cape Town. Yeah. Uh, we're going to be uploading those teaching sessions there. The life and the teachings of Jesus. Mm. We live in a generation that's looking for that prophetic word. That's mm. looking for that rhema. And that's, we love the prophetic Yes. Way. Oh, yes. We have nothing against the prophetic. We love prophets. We have friends who are prophets. Our Father in the Lord is, is, a, is a prophet. Part-time, he calls himself a part-time yeah. prophet. But we, we love the prophetic. The yeah. prophetic is, you know, edifies the church. But mm -hmm. you see, we're in a generation that is interested in nuggets. Mm. My, my father and I were saying, interested in nuggets. Interested in, 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 in witty statements. Interested, yes, interested in, 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 in tiny, oh, that was cute, you know, a message that, you can put up on your status or whatever. But yeah. but many of us have lost the substance. Mm -hmm. The substance of Christianity is Jesus. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you listen to ministers and 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 their their message is just too complicated. Mm -hmm. Um and there's a place for that. The Bible says among the wise we speak wisdom. I get that. However, you must remember that the gospel was not designed. For the educated alone. Mm. It wasn't designed for the graduates alone. Yeah. The gospel is also for people who are illiterate. Yeah. So one of the measures of maturity and depth of wisdom is simplicity. Yeah. So if you if you ask yourself, ask yourself right now, who's the best teacher of all time? You know, someone might say the apostle Paul. Another person might say Oh, Peter was amazing. Another person might say Apollos if they lived in their time. Mm. You know, Peter says about Paul's teaching, some of them are even difficult to understand. He writes that in his epistle. Mm. But what if I put it to you that the best teacher of all time was Jesus? Mm. What if I put it to you that it wasn't Moses? It wasn't Joshua? And as much as, as powerful as they were, choose for yourself whom you will serve as for me and my house. We will serve the Lord. It wasn't Elijah. Mm. 
It was Jesus. Then you look at Jesus' ministry and check how simple his mm. teachings were. Sure. Deep. Check how simple his teachings were. You see, ah, this is what I need to get you to understand. The complex infrastructure mm. that looks marvelous, mm. that the word of God is going to build in your life in the name of Jesus, say amen, amen. will be built brick by brick. Mm. So the Bible talks about how this impartation must happen precept by precept, line by line, a little here, a little there. Mm. Don't try and study an entire thesis on Christianity when you don't understand the basics. Mm. Hebrews chapter 5 and 6 talks about how we should move on from the basics. You know, repentance from dead works, baptisms, forgiveness of sins and all of that. But we can't move on if we don't understand them. Yeah. So, so, so when I say strive to be like Jesus, I'm saying simplify your Christianity. Mm. Ask yourself the simple question, do you look like Jesus? Mm. Go to the book of Matthew. Listen to his Sermon on the Mount mm. and ask yourself, am I like this? Mm. Listen to his teachings on, on adultery. Listen to his teachings on hate. Mm. Listen to his teachings on forgiveness. Listen to his teachings on love. Mm. Listen to his teachings. And that simplicity, and here's my point as I land, the goal of, of, of when we say strive to be like Jesus and, and, and being an authentic minister is you need to be a minister who can make Jesus palpable. Yeah. Jesus must be palpable, that people can almost taste him in the air when you speak, right? That, mm -hmm. that people can feel him, that people don't walk away saying, wow, you're deep, or wow, you're, you're anointed, or wow, you, you, you've got so much revelation. They walk away saying, Jesus is wonderful. Mm -hmm. Then you've done your job effectively. You, you've disseminated Jesus. You have dished out Jesus, the one who can heal, the one who can save, the one who can deliver. So strive to be like Jesus and inevitably you will be authentic because mm. you look like the one who has sent you. So good. Mm. So good. Mm. Someone said, uh, you're so deep that you are drowning in your own deep. Eh, eh. Nobody can get you. <laughs> nobody can understand you. Eh, eh. You are even drowning in your own Exactly. And, and, and I, must, I must commend my wife for this because when you now marry or you now have someone to do life with, they allow you to see yourself. Mm. So... There were times in, early on in my ministry when I would receive revelations mm -hmm. and I'd be so excited about them, mm -hmm. but I'd be preaching to myself mm -hmm. in that it makes sense to me, but I'm not connecting with my audience. Mm -hmm. My audience, I don't, I'm not giving them stories to, to give them an understanding that even if they forget the one, two, three, four, five, they yeah. can remember the story and the principles yeah. behind it. So, so in, in, in striving to be like Jesus, in simplifying your message, in, mm -hmm. in seeing yourself, mm -hmm. you are then able to better connect with the people God has sent you to. Yeah, yeah. Most exceptional leaders are good storytellers. Mm -hmm. Jesus himself mm -hmm. would talk about parables. Absolutely. He would, he would talk, he would tell stories. Yeah. How to be, still we're talking about how do I become authentic as a minister. Mm -hmm. Be loyal to the one who sent you. Yeah. And this tell us talk to us about that. This sounds a lot like the first one. Yeah. But this then allows us to bring in your spiritual uplines. Mm. You know, um, depending on which denomination you belong to or whether you're non denominational. Um, some people are very anti the 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 concept of spiritual parents and all of that, you know, they quote the scripture, mm -hmm. call no one on earth your father and all of that. I get it. Mm -hmm. um, I don't want to get into a theological debate on how Paul says I became your father in the gospel and all of that. Mm -hmm. But I want to say, regardless of whether you say I have a spiritual parent or whatever, mm -hmm. there is someone who God put over you mm -hmm. in the spirit. Yeah. Because you may not have met them. Maybe you've been doing church at home. Yeah does not mean they don't exist. Oh yeah. Every person has a spiritual upline on earth, a physical person. Yeah. It keeps you. It mm -hmm. keeps even a, even a senior pastor. You will find you will have an accountability team, you will have a board, you will have a, a minister. Sometimes sometimes the minister himself who is over him can can have a smaller church than he does. Mm -hmm. But that person is integral to his life and ministry because yeah. he is the one whom God, you know, Paul says, imitate me as I imitate Christ. Mm. He is the one whom God told 
the man to follow mm -hmm. because that man was following Christ. Yeah. So we are saying about that man, mm -hmm. um, be loyal to the one who sent you. Yeah. I've seen people who, after a bit of time in ministry, you're experiencing success, you begin to despise mm -hmm. your spiritual uplines. Mm -hmm. You begin to, to look down on them. Mm -hmm. You begin to think you are better than them. Mm -hmm. That is the work of the devil. Yeah. No matter how, whether you're a hundred times wealthier than your parents, your physical parents, your biological parents, you still honor them, don't you? Yeah. You don't say, hey, you know nothing. That's why yeah. you are like, no, you honor your parents simply because they're your parents. Unless you want to meet your maker. Absolutely. <laughs> and literally as well, because that's a commandment with the promise. So, yeah. so, so, so the same applies to spiritual uplines. Mm. Honor them. Honor the people who God puts you under. It's yeah. so important. No matter how successful you become, you're a minister, you're now leading a church of a thousand, your, your father in the Lord, so to speak, has 30 people in his church. Mm. Honor that man. Mm. Sometimes Honor it's even man. a test. Yes. When your spiritual father has less people than you, yes, you're being tested. Absolutely. So be loyal to the one who exactly. sent you. Of course we're talking about Jesus, but we've dealt with that in striving to be like Jesus. Here yeah. we're talking about the men and the women whom God has put over you. It's a mm -hmm. concern when a son looks nothing like their father. Mm -hmm. Not that the son can be better than the, the father. Yes, of course, that's mm -hmm. the prayer of every genuine father is that their son, my prayer yeah. as a genuine father is that Zion will be mm -hmm. ten times greater than me. Yeah. That, then I know I'm a success. Mm -hmm. That was the prayer of my own father. When he mm -hmm. sees me, he is joy is complete because yeah. I, I can take the name of the family to the next level, right? Okay. So every genuine father wants their son to be greater than them. Mm. However, mm. however, however, mm. that son, their head must not grow big and mm. now think they're better than their father because that is the end. Mm. If you do that, that is the end of your ascension. So yeah. like I was saying, it's important for every son to look like their father. Mm. You may have, you may be taking their grace to the next level. You may be walking in a greater dimension than they are. But we need to be able to see that that connection, mm. and that comes from honor. Mm. Mm -hmm. If we're talking about how do I become authentic as yeah. a minister, yeah. um, and the last point you wrote here is unto yourself be true. Take us through that. <sighs> that one. Yeah. That one is is mm. unto thy own self be true. Be true. Yeah. You live on that, eh? Oh, you you can lie to all of us. You can think you're lying to God. Mm -hmm. You can lie to the people God has given you to lead. Yeah. But you can't lie to yourself. Mm -hmm. Every authentic minister, minister mm -hmm. must strive to be like Jesus, mm -hmm. must be loyal to the one who sends them, yeah. and must be true to themselves. Yeah. You know the areas of your life that need alignment. Don't ignore them when you go into the presence of God. Mm. You know, go and ask for mercy. Go and ask for help. Yeah. Go and receive grace. Mm. Don't pretend to have it all figured out. Don't don't affirm your way out of unrepentant sin. Yeah. You know, mm. yes, your sins are already forgiven, but you must repent. Mm. <laughs> you understand? You can't wake up and affirm that and don't get me wrong like we've said we have no problem with prophets we also don't have problem with affirmations in fact my wife is an yeah. authority on affirmations I but see. don't 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 do affirmations that are lies mm. that i i do not sin at all mm. but you are sinning and you are not willing to repent mm. do you understand what, what the sure. difference between what i'm what i'm saying that it's a, it's a, it's a, it might be a subtle difference but it's a difference nonetheless yes to say I don't sin may get you out of sin, right? Yeah. But don't say I don't sin when you have no investment in repenting at all. Do mm. you understand? Then you're lying. Yeah. So unto thy own self be true. You mm. know the things that could potentially disqualify you. Yeah. Fix them before mm. it's too late. Mm. Mm -hmm. Guys, we're talking about how to be authentic as a minister and by minister we're not just talking about pastors mm. or you know worship leaders or you know we're, we're literally just talking about wh whatever area god has specifically planned you mm. uh, and planted you in you know and we're saying that uh, what causes people to be inauthentic in ministry as pastor tim was talking to us about is 
uh, sending themselves. When you mm. send yourself, you've got a foot for your own bill. Mm. The fear so. of what people will say, you mm. know, in whatever area God has plugged you in. Mm. Uh, some people, uh, the desire to please people, some people have a desire to please people at the expense of being an authentic minister. Mm. Uh, the inability to practice what you preach as a minister uh, and the lack of consistency. Mm. And we spoke about how do you become authentic? And we said you strive to be like Jesus mm. because he's the he's the most authentic minister oh. we've ever oh. who's ever walked the, the tell it like it is. He he would tell it like it is. He did he did not he was not concerned about who was in front of him. Be loyal to the one who sent you. Uh, and we're specifically talking here in the context of, you know, the people that are your covering, you know, yeah. your upline, yeah. as, as Pastor Tim was talking to us about. And unto yourself be true. Mm. I truly believe that uh, we kind of had this video uh, on the back of the previous video we're having mm. together, but I do believe that this is a word in season for someone specific who's watching right now who needed this word on how to be uh, authentic in their place of assignment. Yeah. Um, and so if that was you, if that's connected to you in the comment section below, uh, just let us know um, and just say, I think you were talking to me. Share your story with us if you are free to. And um, let me know if Pastor Tim should come back. <laughs> it, uh, we're going to do a poll in the comment section. Should Pastor Tim come back on the channel? Um, it's always nice to have you around. Thank you so much. Yes. What an honor. God bless you, ladies and uh, gentlemen like me who log on to this channel here Amen. and there. Um, you're doing a great work. May God continue to strengthen your hands Amen. and to extend your territories Amen. in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Mother in Zion. Thank From you, us. Mother of Zion. Amen. Amen. From us, the Gambizas, it's goodbye for now. Take care.